Now let's talk about Tor. It's not a VPN. And by this meme that you see here, it's a lot of people think it's a VPN, but it's not. So Tor isn't a service, unlike the VPNs. It's a public network. And how does Tor work? So Tor, so whenever you're using a VPN, you're 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 the you're making a request to a server. And that server is making the you, the request that you wanted to the destination. So you're routing to one server, and that server knows where it came from and where it's going. However, Tor, you're doing the same thing, but you're routing in in a different way. You're routing to three servers. So the first server knows that you came where you came from. The second server doesn't know you or doesn't know your destination, and the third server knows your destination only. So that way, the trust is not only reliant on one server, one company, or one individual. It's divided between many servers that don't know each other at all because they're just random computers over the internet. And that's how you can ensure yourself that, it's, um, that, that you have more privacy and more security. Also, every communication is encrypted. And it works in a way of uh, onions. So how that means is that, first of all, it has three levels of encryption. And every level has, it can be only decrypted by the servers here. So the first level can only be decrypted by the entry server, let's say the, the, the one you're sending to, the second layer, can be only decrypted by the middle relay. And the final, the third uh, layer can only be decrypted by the exit relay. And what does each level or um, layer hide of information? It hides the address or the destination, the next destination. So the entry ward, as soon as it receives it, it decrypts the first layer and now it knows how to get to the middle relay. One, once the middle relay gets the information, it decrypts the second layer, and now it knows the exit relay uh, destination's address. The, something that the entry ward couldn't know because it couldn't decrypt the layer that had that information. And the exit relay decrypts the final layer, which reveals the destination uh, address or onion address. So. You can connect to normal internet domains and you win privacy, but they don't because you're still connecting to either an IP address or a domain name, which you know where it is and what what its name is and probably its jurisdiction. So there's something called hidden services, which are a way for the destination to remain private as well. So. These are also known as onion services or onion addresses. And this is what most people call the dark web or the deep web because it's probably services that don't want to be discovered by anyone and they can do it using Tor as well. And it's way more private in a way that there's not only six relays, there's, there's not only three relays, there's actually six relays. So there's a lot of people talking about Maybe Tor was created by the government. So this meme portrays that. It says, what if the Tor browser was created by the government as a way of tracking online activity, right? The, the joke behind this is that the internet is already the way to track online activity. How can Tor browser be that? So Tor is used by the US military government to hide their own activities. So if the government is using it to hide their own activities, uh, it's probably because they trust the privacy behind it. So Tor is not perfect. No one should say that. But it's certainly the best available option and the less centralized alternative out there for internet privacy. And you can also use, you can use a Tor browser, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but you can also use Tor with applications. An example would be Wasabi, which has already Tor wrapped within itself. So whenever you just run Wasabi, it automatically starts Tor on the background and every connection is done through Tor. But you can also use Tor on Android 
which, which is called Orbat. I have an official version. It does have some unofficial versions, which I wouldn't particularly trust. But on Android Orbot, which is, let's say, the, the Tor engine, and there's also Orfox, which is the um, browser. So on Android, using Orbot, you can link it with other applications. So let's say uh, there's some Bitcoin wads that require you to use Orbot if you want to use them with Tor. So I'm going to show you uh, the Tor browser right now. So you can see that it's very simple. I just click on Tor Browser after I install it. And that's it. I have a Tor Browser now. And I have, uh, I can always go here and click on New Tor Circuit. This basically just changes the nodes, the relays that I'm connecting to. I can also do New Identity. And New Identity just resets all the cache and all the, the, the information that I have on my browser and it just becomes like a completely new window and it also gives me a new route so in here I can do anything that I do normally I can go on Google it's however you got to consider that this because it's routing to so many computers it's more slow than it's way slower so here it's proposing me a, a Dutch as a language because Google thinks that I'm coming from the Netherlands, right? Uh, if I do new Tor circuit, it's probably uh, it's still Netherlands. But uh, in, in some cases, when I do new, uh, new identity, new circuit, it's going to give me another language because Tor doesn't, it's, it's just giving me another country. I'm not, I don't know if that's going to be the case. You see, here there's another language. This one, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe some of you know. So you see, this is how Tor works. So it's like, a, I'd say it's a decentralized way of achieving privacy, at least way more than a VPN. But it has a trade-off, which is probably the speed. You cannot watch high-quality movies through Tor in real time. It's much, much slower. But you can do any sort of stuff that you do regularly on the internet. Plus, you can access the onions, the, the hidden services, which are onion addresses, usually deep web stuff. So that's how that works. And also, you can probably guess that it's based on Firefox. It just has some some additional components.